first, though, for tens of thousands of British teenagers. The dream of going to university is slipping away. This is amid a record scramble for places through clearing. So what are the options now? Sarah Clover is a former apprentice with British Gas, who now helps young people find vocational jobs. She's here with entrepreneur Andre Campbell, who runs a youth education service. Very good morning to you. Good morning. Hello. Now, uh, maybe as an overview, this is a time when there will be some very disappointed young people who cannot get places. That is an inevitability. What is your sort of overriding message if, that, if you are one of those people? If you are one of those people, then our overriding message at Not Going To Uni is don't panic. There are an awful lot of different ways that you can achieve your career goals, many of which may not have been discussed in career guidance at school. So stay calm, have a look at your options, and there is a good chance that you will be able to find an alternate route to achieve what you want. It's quite difficult not to panic, though, if you're told that going to university is the right step, it's the best way of get, securing a decent job and a decent salary in the future. What do you do? How do you, how do you come to some conclusion that it's fine? Do you just think, OK, I'll defer for this year, I'll get there eventually? Or do you look at completely different routes? I would strongly advise looking at completely different routes rather than deferring. Obviously, there is going to be quite a substantial increase in fees next year, which is going to impact on young people. And also, by the sounds of it, it sounds like they're advising young people to simply hold off for a year and apply again next year. So I think we're going to see the same sort of scramble for places. With options such in vocational training, such as apprenticeships, you get paid while you're learning, you're taken on as an employee, you, you're working towards a nationally recognised qualification, and over 90% of apprentices are in training or employment at the compl upon completion, and obviously they haven't incurred any debt. Also, employers are rapidly becoming aware that the sort of hands-on practical skills that you get via the vocational route actually put you ahead of somebody who's done it purely academically. So apprenticeships are no longer seen as the sort of the poor cousin or the second choice. Mm. It's acknowledged that you know you've proven that you've done the academic side, but you've also had to prove that you're, you're aware of how to demonstrate it practically too. So Andre, uh, give us I mean, a, a brief. Did you go to university? What's your the brief version of your story? Okay, so in a nutshell, I went through clearing. I was yep. in a situation about four years ago. Um, I dropped into university. None, nobody in my family went. And um, I just said I'd give it a go. And I went in with an attitude that was to try my best and do everything I could. So you did go to university? Yeah. And you've come out at the end of it. And now, are you, are you encouraging people that they should go, or are you trying to advise them with different options? OK. So through university, I found entrepreneurship. Um, didn't know what it meant at the start and quite simply um, now I run an organisation called Infuse Youth which is all about helping young people establish their dream careers and then actually helping them make that happen and we believe it's through the training, it's through opportunities and through mentorship. Both of you have mentioned training, opportunities, apprenticeships, mentorship it's not easily available. We hear of apprenticeships that are oversubscribed. It's difficult to find mentors. It's difficult to find funding. How can people who say, OK, I accept that university is not for me, how can they be encouraged to go along with those routes? Well, we've actually found, because we go out and speak to a lot of young people at schools and colleges, because they seem to be aware now that young people do need to know about the different options. The one size fits all, sort of everybody should go to university, is not appropriate. And so we do go in, we speak to a lot of young people and we find them very receptive once they're made aware of the options. What we do find is that a lot of young people are often not told about apprenticeships, they're not told about sponsored degrees or distance learning or even encouraged to investigate these options. And so they don't follow them. They're literally only told about university. That's where sort of our website and other services like it do come into play. And can I ask Andre, just one other thing, I mean we're constantly told that uh, those who are less well off are not being put off going to university because of the hike in fees. When you're talking to young people, how much is this issue of the debt you will carry with you, however you, you, you know, play with it and however it gets paid back, how much does that lump sum affect whether or not some people are going to go for university? Okay, so in some of the um, schools that we work in, in, in London, when you mention £9,000 or £40,000 to a young person, it's something that they just can't conceptualise at the moment. It's, you know, at the moment, given the economic climate, there's a lot of young people whose parents are out of work. So £9,000 to invest in an education, which is important, but it's in the future, it's something that they're struggling to get. Yeah quite mm. simply. We're going to be talking more uh, later on throughout the morning this morning about other options for those who haven't got places for the moment.
Thank you very much. Thank Thank you. Now, anyone who still needs information about clearing can call the National Student Helpline. The number's on the screen, 0808 100 8000. 0808 100 8000. Yes, in just an hour's time, we'll be speaking to the Chief Executive of UCAS, that's Mary Kernock cook for the latest clearing figures, those due in this morning. So we should be able to update you on that and give you some more advice. That's coming up later. Time now, though, is 17 minutes past 7.